The mid-afternoon in Terra de Estate is greeted with a visit from a traveling circus troupe. A large gathering is held in the giant, flamboyantly colored tent where the festivities are being held. The audience is treated to fantastic feats ranging from juggling, trapeze artists, and a few comedic skits between the clowns. Now the finale is about to go underway, and a woman in a green ring master outfit struts up to the center ring. She's clearly enjoying the awe and applause their performances have been receiving. And now she's ready to end the festivities with a bang. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we have saved the best for last. She's wacky, she's jolly, and she can stretch as far as this tent. Please welcome the fun and flexible femme, Plato! A second spotlight turns on, aiming at a platform high above the ringmaster and audience. Standing, or rather, hand standing, on the platform is a young woman in a rather eye-catching clown outfit. Her hair is tied up in two large ponytails with bells on the ends, and she wears an orange and purple jumpsuit with puffy sleeves on both the arms and legs. She uses one of her hands to playfully squeeze her round, light green nose, letting out a loud honk sound. <laughs> Hiya there, everybody! Now I know what you're thinking. I dare say, what does this oddly dressed woman intend to do? Well, I'm glad you asked. Plato points down to the floor below, a third spotlight kicking in. To the surprise and confusion of everyone, nothing was there. You probably noticed there's nothing there. But where you guys see nothing, I see something else. She turns around and stands backward on the edge of the platform. She turns to the crowd, gives a cheeky wink, and falls backwards. As the crowd gasp and mutter to themselves, unsure of if the young woman would survive her fall, Plato curls up and performs a few flips. As she keeps flipping, her body begins to morph into a completely round sphere. As she hits the ground in her new form, she bounces off and begins to ricochet around the tent, carefully aiming herself to land and bounce off of different platforms the other performers had set up for her. She eventually gets bounced high to the center of the ring, uncurls out of her ball form, and stretches her arms out to grab the nearest trapeze pole. The audience is enamored by how effortlessly she swings around from her arms, questioning how she's able to do it all. As she flips into the air one last time, she inflates her body as if she were a large parade float, gently floating in front of the awestruck crowd. Hold on tight! Don't want to accidentally blow anyone away. Finally, she lets out a large gust of air from her lips, deflating and flying around the stage like a balloon rapidly losing its air. After she fully deflates, she lands back down on a platform on the ground and struts one last pose. The crowd lets out a roar of applause, accompanied by thunderous clapping. Melitia steps forward with a proud smile on her face. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Plato, the fun and flexible femme. That concludes this year's show. Thank you all once again for coming. Have a great night. As the crowd continues to applaud the act, Plato skips and eventually somersaults backstage with glee. Plato approaches a small group of clowns. Each of them is sitting in the wings to get a glimpse of the stage. Holy explicitives! <laughs> did you guys see that? The crowd loved it all! And you guys did an awesome job too! Honey, your act was my favorite! I loved every minute of it, especially with that big old smile of yours. <laughs> Aw, you always know what to say to perk someone up, Snickerdoodle. Uh, honestly, I don't blame him. You were amazing out there! It was so exciting and heart racing and, 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 God, I wish I could be as amazing as you. Now you hold on there, little sis. You did just as great as I did. This circus wouldn't be what it is without everyone giving it their all. And that includes you too, lols. G gosh I, thank you. I, I, I... Hey, chortles, no lips. What did you think of Plato? I liked watching her bounce around like a ball. You were going so fast. Right, No Lips? No Lips nods, then gives her a thumbs up for a job well done. <laughs> you guys! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Hugs for days! Yay! 
Their moment of familial bonding is interrupted as Madame Malizia walks in, her hand on her hip. She scowls at the troop venomously. Well, well, it's a bit premature to be celebrating, isn't it? What do you mean, Madame Malizia? <laughs> Don't fool yourselves. That may have been a great show, but it is far from our best. And I would like to see each of you put in all of your efforts the next time we perform. What are you talking about, Double M? We did give it our all back there. Moles contorted her little heart out, Snickerdoodle juggled the heck out of those pins and rings, and didn't you see how big I ballooned back there? <laughs> That's gotta be, what, five, maybe ten feet bigger than last time? First, I told you a thousand times not to touch me. Second, it doesn't matter what the performers think. It's how the audience views you. And from my perspective, your acts weren't good enough to receive standing ovations. So once again, I urge you all to put more effort into your work and give our next audience a show worth seeing. Understand? All right, if you say so, Malizzi. Malizia! Enough with the idle nicknames. Pack your bags. We leave for Vernal Valley in 15 minutes. I don't want any dilly-dallying. Yes, yes, Madam Malizia. Malizia. <sighs> yes, Madam Malizia. With no further words spoken, the ringmaster struts off, leaving the clowns to themselves. Well, you heard Miss Malizzi. Better get packing. Why did you backtalk Madam Malizia like that, Plato? She's our boss. Well, it'd be easier to appreciate her as a boss if she didn't have that whip of hers shoved up her basement. Don't you guys think we don't deserve this kind of treatment? Honey, please don't make it worse than it already is. We were homeless before Malaysia found us. The least we can do is appreciate what we have and endure it. Besides, it's not so bad. She may be mean, but she does take care of us. Yeah, but you'd think someone who works with clowns for a living would crack a genuine smile now and then. But... Uh, I, I guess you have a point. I don't want to make things more hostile for you guys. If she won't treat you right, I'll just make sure she doesn't treat you worse. That's the spirit. Come on, let's get this luggage in the trunk while we still can. The gang disbands to gather their belongings. No Lips, however, stays behind and puts a hand on Plato's shoulder. They sign. Don't let Malizia discourage you, rubber band. Your words were inspiring. Thank you. Smiling, Plato signs back. You really have a way with words, chatter hands. Exchanging a secret handshake, they part ways and Plato goes to gather her bags. As she packs, Lulz nervously walks up to her. Hey, Plato. Can I ask you something? Hmm? What's on your mind, sis? Well, I know I'm new here, but how do you deal with it all? What? You mean Miss Melissa over there? <laughs> Sometimes it helps to remind her that working with clowns, you gotta get used to having a sense of humor. I meant just... just being a clown in general. You seem to take it in with such a stride, like you're so proud of it. But I don't know if I can handle it all. What if people think we're freaks? Don't you ever wonder that? Why should I care if I'm seen as a freak or not? B but you know how mean people can be. You've never had any of that bother you growing up? Plato stops packing to look at Lulz. The younger Cloud's eyes are filled with confusion and uncertainty. Lulz hadn't been with the Merry Andrews as long as Plato or the other clowns. She'd just recently run away to join them because she couldn't handle the stress and mental torture she had to endure all her life. And standing before her was a woman who, as far as she knew, was able to take life's harshness better than she could ever dream of doing. Plato walks her over to a nearby pair of chairs and sits her down. Well, whenever I felt down about being a clown, I think about a little girl who went through something very similar to what you went through. Really? Who was she? Her name was Millie, and believe it or not, she was born a clown, just like you and me. You see, her folks didn't quite know what to think of little Millie growing up. She not only looked different from most kids, but also had weird abilities like we do. She also wasn't that good at controlling her clown quirks, and that got her into trouble. <laughs> Everyone kept talking about her behind her back, her teachers. Other students, the kids who lived next door, and even her parents gossiped about her. 
She always felt like everyone saw her as some kind of freak. And for a long time, she believed it. That's so sad. Yeah, she was sad for a long time now. But over time, she realized that she wasn't a freak. She was a joke. Wait, how is that better? Well, do you know what the purpose of a joke is? To make people laugh? Exactly. That's why people love jokes so much. I mean, sure, not everyone has the same sense of humor. But as long as you can make people laugh and smile when they need it, that's all that matters as far as I'm concerned. I... I guess I never thought of it that way before. Yep. And I know you can make people smile as long as you keep doing your best. And you know the rest of us have your back. Lulz lets out a sniffle as she wiped one of her tears. She then threw herself onto Plato to give her a big hug. Thanks, Plato. It means a lot to me hearing that. The younger clown then got up and went back to her dressing room to pack up. As Plato gets up from her seat to resume her task, Snickers walks up to her. Hey, I heard you talking to Lulz. And your story, it was sweet. Yeah, she seemed like she needed some reassurance. I know she's been a bit of a nervous Nelly ever since joining us. So hopefully that helped give her a confidence boost. <sighs> Look, I know you've been through a lot. But consider yourself lucky that we found you. You're like family to us, Plato. And family needs to stick together. Right? They certainly do, Snickers. Well, we better not keep slacking off or else old lady Melissa is going to give us an earful again. And we certainly don't want that, do we? <laughs> and hey, thanks for the talk, Millie. Sure thing, Jamari. The two clowns give each other a quick hug before they resume their packing. Plato starts to hum a quirky melody as she puts her personal belongings away. She knows that the Merry Andrews need to keep their hopes up and their energy infectious if they want to help make the world smile and laugh. She might not have had much of a sense of humor growing up, but now she wants to help everyone learn how to take the joke known as life. <laughs>